So, do you ever wonder why governments make the decisions they do? As a community college leader, I became intrigued by government decisions to make major changes in post-secondary education. I began to wonder, when governments make major policy decisions, what problems are they trying to solve? How do they learn about those problems and identify alternatives? And how is it that ultimately some policy ideas prevail and under what conditions does that happen? Now I'm guessing that most of you in this room have paid tuition fees and you may have very strong feelings or beliefs about it. These students are protesting a government decision to increase tuition fees and these types of protests have occurred recently in Canada and around the world. Now much of what scholars examine in post-secondary policy studies involves evaluation. On tuition fees, for example, research typically investigates the different, ki the different impacts that different levels of tuition fees have on individuals, on groups, or on society. My research, on the other hand, explores the dynamics of tuition policy change. I'm interested in how and why tuition lands as a policy problem on government agendas, how organized in interests frame and represent their policy ideas, and how decision makers make choices. Through 59 interviews and a review of the historical record, I closely examined three episodes of major tuition policy change in three very different provinces. I was most interested in the first stages of new policy development, shown here on the slide, agenda setting, alternative specification, and decision making. Now what's different about my research is I look closely into the politics in these communities. I use two alternative theories from political science to identify key factors in tuition policy change and to develop a new conceptual understanding of how we generate post-secondary policy in Canada. Several of the factors I, ident I identified include changing fiscal climate, changing political allegiances, and changes in public opinion on university accessibility. Now this research is important in a number of ways. First, it supports democratic participation in the overall governance of post-secondary education. Further, for people who want to influence government, uh, government decisions, it's important, it reveals important information on how groups can effectively advance their interests, and it sheds new light on the nature of post-secondary policy making more generally. So, do student protests make a difference? They can, but my research suggests there may be better ways of having an impact on government policy. Thank you.